Hello, my name is Rylan. I'm from Denver, Colorado, and you're watching Trucker Josh on YouTube. Good morning everybody took two and a half hours since we got here but we're finally ready to go just picked up our new load that's taking us back to winnipeg and manitoba and it's steel very very bendy fragile steel so it's very hard to tie this stuff down without bending it so i did the best i possibly could and we're taking this to uh, a little town near winnipeg actually called oak bluff And there we go. So it took a little while to get everything done. Like I said, we're here in Brampton, Ontario. It's, like I said yesterday, it's Toronto, Ontario. For those of you who don't know where Brampton is. And we're about to get out of here. Oh, I gotta tie down these yet. Uh, one second here, one second. Get you guys over there. Quick. Can't use bungees on this stuff back here. They will take it you for that. Should have been wearing gloves for this, but I thought I was done. Gloves away already. Come on. There you go. There you go. Tied down. Everything on the headache rack is tied down. I had to use my ladder quite a bit on this. That's tied on. But this on here, this strap here, this rug is protecting this strap here. It's pinned against this this is very sharp stuff eh? so i don't want to rip my strap so that's guarding that in there it's rock and roll ladies and gentlemen dogs and cats anyone else who might be watching my videos i don't want to get out of toronto been here long enough let's go home Jesus. Everybody keeps asking for more weasel. They all want to, they want me? Yeah, you Diesel. Why would they want me? I'm just a weasel. Diesel, you are not just a weasel. There's only one Diesel weasel, and that's you. You are the one and the only. That is very special. I guess if you put it that way, man, you have to ring my own bells or anything. I don't think that's the saying, but we'll, we know what you mean. We're gonna go home now, man. Toronto is scary. Yeah, I know. Toronto, it's a big city. Toronto is the uh, the biggest city in Canada. It is also the city that controls our entire political system. So, uh, a lot of, would you say, power in this city? A lot of uh, influence over the entire country? It's pretty much the entire country has to do whatever this city wants it to do. We don't have a say. It's uh, a lot of people here, a lot of people. And there's people in Toronto from all over the world. You come here and every corner of the world is pretty much equally represented when you get into the heart of Toronto, Mississauga, places like that. Uh, you know, people like me who uh, were born in Canada are actually uh, the minority in Toronto. Where It's a minority majority is what they call it. So... Uh, there's more of them that were born overseas and moved here than us who were, who are, you know, like fifth, sixth generation Canadian. Though one of my generations in my family line was removed because they moved away for a while, but they came back. We're back. We're back. But anyways. Diesel, no one wants to hear about this stuff, man. Stop it. Stop it. Let's just go. Let's get out of here, man. All right. All right. Let's get out of here. Took us long enough to get everything tied down again. We're gonna have to go to our first on route or whatever rest area and uh, double check everything, make sure nothing is shifted or settled in, make sure the straps are still all tight. I don't like these loads, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't like these loads. This load, like these loads where the steel is so low grade, 
that it bends so easily. You can't tie it down without flexing it or bending it. It's it's really frustrating. They, they should really go on some kind of different kind of transport, but it is what it is. We'll do what we can. We'll do our best not to bend it. Last time I delivered to these people, they were pretty well and understanding. They they told me they know that it's practically impossible to get it shipped to them without it being a little bit out of shape. Like, but they can. They said they can bend it back because it's such low grade. But I don't. I don't like that. So I did my best. I mean, I think it'll be all right. Got a green light coming up here soon or what? Yeah, I like green lights. They're my favorite. So much better than those ugly red ones. So the GPS Karen here says that we have 2,142 kilometers to our destination. We have uh, today, tomorrow, and the day after to get there. So two and a half days pretty much. We've got a lot of time. meters. Turn left on. Oh. Clean straight east. Left? Seven. Oh, I'd want to turn right. I'm going to turn left. Oh, cities. 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 All their city buses that stop every block. All their people everywhere. What's this on the left? Is that a bus stop? What a fancy bus stop. Wow. Is that heated? It's indoor and heated. Well, that's convenient. That is convenient. So uh, this is Helen Street. I have no idea where that is. Somewhere in Toronto. Probably not even Toronto to the locals, but like I said, everything here is Toronto to me. We're on Highway 7. I'm trying to get to Highway 400, but everywhere I go, I'm meeting construction or traffic. I didn't want to take the toll road, so here we are, snaking our way through the city. There was probably a better way to go, but that didn't happen. Easy, guys, easy. Take her easy. Everyone in every city, everywhere, is always in such a hurry. And you know, like, me and Britt talk about this sometimes. Like, we don't understand why city people are in such a rush. Like, you live five minutes from everything. If we want to go grocery shopping, we got to make an afternoon out of it. We got to plan that out. It's like a half hour to Walmart, half hour back. We may as well get a whole bunch of other things done while we're in town. And these people in the city. Five minutes to everything, and yet they're in such a hurry. They're trying to make, trying to get there in four minutes instead of five. Maybe that's why living in the countryside, you sort of just appreciate time more and you just, you organize your time better, take your time, you're more patient in traffic for the most part, and, or maybe uh, well, you don't have to deal with a lot of traffic usually. But still, even with a lot of traffic in the city, you can get to anywhere where you need to go. Like let's say you're going grocery shopping, you can get to the grocery store in five, 10 minutes, even with traffic. With no traffic, I still gotta wait a half hour or drive a half hour, you know what I mean? I just don't understand why everyone is is in such a rush to get nowhere. That's the, one of the biggest things I don't like about big cities and why I don't think I could live in one forever, long term, just for me personally. Like, what's the rush? It takes the fun out of life. You know, it sucks the joy out of you when you're constantly rush, 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 rush. Just, you know, take your time. Plan to do a few less things per day, maybe, so you have more time to get the other things done. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just rambling on about nothing, because here we are, rolling through Toronto. This bus's lane ends. Okay, he's uh, picking up that person there. See, that's why I don't want to get in that lane, because as soon as I get in that lane, I get stuck behind one of these buses. Are we getting close to the 400? Karen, for some reason, does not want me to take the 400. I could not get her to route me down the 400. Well, how else are you gonna get me home? I'll have to take the 400 north, because that's how I get home, right? She wants me to 
want me to take some back ways through the back country. She must be listening to me. She knows me. She knows I like back country a little better, but not. That's a little too far around there, Karen. just north of Toronto and we're gonna park here at the on route go check all my straps see if my load has settled yet tighten them up if they need a little tightening so we've been driving about uh, 40 kilometers or so maybe 30 miles no not even quite 25 miles maybe While we're here, we'll go in and get a coffee. Keep to the left on Highway 400 and then keep to the left in 120 meters. Karen, you're trying to tell me to go where the cars are supposed to go. I'm a truck. Remember? You're supposed to be a truck GPS. We go this way. We park with all the other trucks. We park with our own kind. Not with them over there. With those people over there in their tiny little. Proceed to the highlighted cars. route. What? Look at all this parking here too. Why are all these cars following me? There's two cars that followed me in here. Oh, they want. Yeah, they're still. They came the wrong way. Ugh. All right. Oh, I'm tired for some reason. Tired. Oh boy. Don't need that running. Let's let the good world know that we are doing a load check. Not, nope, nope, load check. And also, side note, I'm gonna check my tires. There you go, it's on the record. Wait, I pressed okay, there you go. On the record, we are currently checking our load and checking our tires. Can't tell me I didn't check it. Though, I don't think I could, <laughs> mentally go any further without checking it especially with a load like this very low gauge steel bends very easily right with the trailer flexing and everything shaking and vibrating on the road and going over the bridge connections and stuff everything always sort of you know settles in a little bit and then the straps are loose and if you're going down the highway and you don't keep up with tightening your straps when everything settles especially with light steel like this the wind will just grab one of those little pieces of steel and whew, throw it out into traffic and you know, that's what everybody wants on their way home from work. Dodging pieces of steel flying off Trucker Josh's trailer. That's just what they were hoping would happen on their way home from work. But, uh, don't mean to disappoint them, that's not gonna happen. 
Oh, it stinks out here. Whoa, they're getting their sewage pumped or something? What? Woo! That's fresh. Woo -hoo. It stinks. That stinks like sewer. Sewer, sewer. Like the sewer, sewer. Not any kind of sewer, like the real, like. Like sticking your head right in there. That's strong. All right, so I'm gonna wait for this guy. You're all right, bud. All good, bud. I'll wait. There we go. See, and then I take my bar and I go check this all out. Well, look at this here. Make sure that that's gonna be tight. Gonna have to check that out. I'll walk around. Grabbing all these. You just want to make sure that everything is tight, right? As tight as it can be. So I'm going to go around the whole trailer and do this just to make sure that uh, we're not going to have any incidents. No one likes incidents. What should do? We should be good and tight now. That's what stinks over there. They're cleaning out the sewer just like we thought. Gotta be done. All right, I must be doing something wrong though, because that is raunchy. Woo. So the lady at Tim Hortons there, actually the whole staff there uh, didn't speak very good English and it was very hard to communicate what I wanted. And I said I wanted a chicken bacon ranch wrap. What happened? They brought me a chicken bacon ranch panini. So I said, excuse me, sorry, uh, this isn't what I ordered. I ordered a wrap. They got mad at me. I don't know what they were saying, but they're gibbering away in a different language, all angrily. She went back there and like slapped her stuff down and like made a wrap. And then she brought me the wrap and the panini and a hash brown, which was nice. So uh, I got to keep the panini that wasn't supposed to be there. But she practically threw the bag down on the table said something in some foreign language sort of sounded like she was blaming me for mess for her messing up my order you know if we could at least communicate would have solved this problem I don't know why you're mad at me but they were mad so <laughs> everyone in line there like just jaws on the ground as I was walking away they're like wow like towards that employee like wow they must be having a bad day or wow like, that was bad. I'm like, yeah, well, hey, at least I got a panini. <laughs> Free panini, which is like, uh, I don't know, it looks like a grilled cheese. I don't know what it is, grilled cheese. I don't know, I guess we're gonna find out. Got it for free anyway, as it should be, after being treated like that. How dare they? So we gotta get out of this rest area and I'll get back on the road. And we still have 2,152 kilometers to go. That's probably, I'm guessing, 1,700 miles. Somewhere in and around there. So uh, it would be two full days of driving. But we're gonna drive a little bit uh, as far as we can tonight yet until we get tired and have to sleep. And then we have two full days after this yet to get to Winnipeg. And we unload Friday morning. So it's Tuesday today. We're rolling into the town of New Liskert, Ontario. It's right along the Quebec border. We decided to take Highway 11. Not sure if I told you that yet or not. But uh, I got a pretty light load and we got extra time. So I figure we'll take the flat route. And it also keeps us away from the Great Lakes a little further north so that we don't always get as much snow. But as you can see here, we're still getting some snow. I think it would have been worse down right on the lake because Highway 17 goes right along the water, right? And they always get such bad snowfalls there. They get bad snowfalls here too, but uh, we're, we're trying this out. How dare you? That wasn't very nice. Oh, the guy behind me went right through the red. Right through the salt. <laughs> oh well. We're gonna stop here for night at the Husky up ahead here. So there's a petrol pass off to our left and a Husky on the right. The Husky has better lighting in their parking lot. So we're gonna go and try there first, but this one usually fills up quicker. It's quarter after 10 in the evening right now. 
So we'll see, where's their driveway? Where's your driveway? Here you are. Is this my drive? Do I go in here? Is this where trucks go? I'm, I'm going for it. I'm going for it. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, we'll go around to the back. See if there's any parking for a trucker Josh and a weasel. Maybe they saved you a spot, Diesel. I don't know if they saved me one. Let's see. I'm getting a little tired, and I don't really want to, uh, I could park right behind this guy, I guess. Nah. I'm just getting a little tired, I want to pull over. The snow is getting a little heavier, and it's dark. I'm tired. Plenty far enough that we can make it in the next two days. We'll just find a nice spot to park and call it a night. How's that sound? That's what you do when you get tired, you pull over and you park. Unless you got one of those pushy dispatchers that uh, doesn't let you do that. Well, I fortunately work with great people. Let's see, let's see. I don't know if there'll be any spots here for us. These tires I bought are great. I bought them just for this weather, right? The, the new drives and the new steers. Don't even spin. Like they're, they're great. Great traction in this snow. Is that anywhere we can park? Well, we might have to go over to Petrol Pass. Look at this deep snow we're going through. The truck doesn't even notice it. Just a tank. These tires are amazing. I'm gonna find a spot here. Huh, I think I saw a spot on the other side. I'm gonna have to do a U-turn and go back to get in there. Oh, 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 is there more parking over here? What's this? I'm gonna go back and try and find that other spot. And then a U-turn here. I have to come at it from a bit of a different angle. I got my lights off in the parking lot here so that I'm not shining my headlights into these people's cabs. These people are trying to sleep. Nothing more irritating when you're trying to sleep and someone pulls into the truck stop with their high beams on, shining right in your cab. Not, every, not everybody puts the curtains across, right? I always hang my shirts here so that that doesn't happen, but if, if you don't do that, you get blinded. Isn't there really a park over there? There's a park there. Yeah, my old tires would have been spinning going through here. I've been having a bit of a difficult time. Now even my steers, no slippage, nothing. Right, you guys see any open spots? I don't see any open spots. I think I see one over here. I'm gonna find out. Is this even a spot? I don't think this is a spot. These guys are parked here, so. Oh, that spot just opened. Oh, I'm gonna go and take that spot. Before this guy does. Oh, there's Bison coming in here. Don't take my spot, Bison. Which way are you going? Oh no, you want to go this way. Oh no, and Bison's going to go and take that spot. No you're not, Bison. No you're not, Bison. Bison. Don't do it, Bison. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay, good, he didn't. Oh, I thought he was going to steal my spot. I would have... I would have had to get out of my truck and go and shake my finger at him. In true Canadian fashion. Look at this beautiful right here. Surprised he didn't take it. Oh boy, am I gonna be able to get in here at this angle? Oh, well, I'm gonna have to take this wider. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna make this. Nope, I'm gonna have to back up and come at it again. Okay. Good thing I know what I'm doing, eh? Good thing I know what I'm doing. Nobody behind me. 
Excuse me, pardon me. Trucker Josh moving around here. Everybody, get out of my way. This guy on the right here isn't supposed to be parked there for this very reason, because he's in our way. But I can still get in there, no big deal. I just gotta back up a little bit here. There's nobody in the parking lot. I'm so glad that Bison didn't see that spot. Oh, I guarantee you he would have taken it if he would have noticed it there. Okay, let's take this a little bit wider. Let's go all the way against the snow bank here. With our good tires. See, I need this space where this guy is parked. That's why you're not supposed to park here. But we will make it happen anyways. Bumpy, bumpy, bumpy. Oh yeah, no problem. We got this. We got this. Perfect spot. Look at this. I'm gonna slip right in here. Just right in here. Right in here. Careful not to hit his trailer. Oh, like a glove. Look at that. Oh. Like it was meant to be. Beautiful. See, and then I park back here so that if that guy's idling his truck, his engine is way up there, far away from my sleeper. Once again, we tell everybody that, hey, we are done our day. We push a couple of buttons here, send all our paperwork in to the people that need it. Oh, my hands are dirty. Where did that, how did that happen? Oh. Almost looks like I worked today. Man, don't want people thinking I'm actually working. Dirty hands. Come on, come on, come on. The screen isn't working. The screen isn't working properly. Diesel, did you do something with this thing? One more button. One more. There it goes. Cool boy. And all we gotta do is walk around the truck, do our uh, post trip. You have four hours and 31 minutes of remaining drive time. Calm down. I don't need it. I'm done for today. One more. Come on, come on. Give me a couple more buttons. Sometimes the screen doesn't work that well. There. Thanks for watching today. Thanks for hanging out with me. We are out of Toronto. Hallelujah. And we are in New Liskert, Ontario. Uh, looks like we're going to be waking up with a lot of snow. So uh, here you guys go. You guys, it's already falling down the windshield here a little bit. There we go. Uh, got a nice parking spot here. No one's going to bug us. So thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, or hit the down but vote button if, if you thought it was terrible. Uh, but if you did think it was terrible, make sure to share it with all your friends to, to show them how terrible it was. And make sure they all comment and leave a rating as well. If you liked it, you can do the same thing. Share it with your friends. Show, show them what's going on with Trucker Josh. Talk about Trucker Josh. Tell them to subscribe to Trucker Josh.